All right, so talking through the gravitational force investigation, the distance part, I made this a separate activity because I made some tweaks to the document um, so that we can do this, I think, a little more clearly. Um, so first things first, originally it was setting the masses to 10, or 10 times 10 to the fifth, 1 million kilograms each. I changed that so that the force numbers would come out a little more nicely and it'd be easier to see the multiples and the force factors. Um, so make sure you set 1 to 94.8 and 1 to 94.9. If you do that, move my face, um, then you should get a force of about 60 newtons. I couldn't get it equal to 60. It's as close as I could get, but... Um, we'll start with, uh, we'll start with that. So 94.9, 94.8 when they're at negative five and five. So 10 meters apart. Um, you can show the distance up here, by the way. Um, they should, the force should be pretty close to 60 newtons. Um, all right. So you'll form the hypothesis. How do you think that's going, the distance and force is going to be related here? Um, what's going to happen if the distance doubles? So make a prediction twice the distance. How does the force change? What would it be? Um, and then drop it in here, distance between two objects, 10 meters, the force on them, we should start at 60. That's where we're going. Um, and then you're placing it at each of these locations, again, looking at um, kind of discrete intervals of how the distance changes, and then writing in and measuring basically how, how much force is on those two objects. That's what you're getting from the simulation. So you're looking through the trend here, basically just these two columns first, um, how they behave related to each other. And then I wanted to point out, so when you're doing the force factor here, um, again, just like you did with before, you're dividing each of these forces by the original force, the one you started with here in the first line, which should have been 60 newtons, um, and keeping three significant digits. Significant digits are basically, they kind of tell you how to round, um, but it's not exa an exact place to round. So if I were to grab a random position here at a random distance. Um, so if I wanted to keep three significant digits here, that's two, the five, the six. So 25.6 is where I would stop. Um, but if I were to, let's see, put these really far away. Um, I can't get this down below zero. Let's make this like five. And I wanted to keep boom, 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 this like five. Now, three significant digits here are going to start after the six. Let's point zero, zero, six is the first significant digit. It's telling you how it's, so it's like point zero, zero, six, zero, zero. Um, that's what we're talking about significant digits here. Okay, anyways. Um, so keeping that in there, they should come out to roughly, um, the force factors should be, you should, they should be similar, N nice enough numbers, I think, because I moved the forces around. Um, nice enough numbers, you should be able to recognize the fraction that's there. Um, that's what I'm hoping anyways. Uh, but it's one of the things we're going to do next. Um, one thing to do here is the one over the distance squared. So here you're going to calculate the reciprocal of the square of the distance. Um, so if this was 10 meters in the first one, like we said, this would be one divided by 100 because it's distance squared or 0 0.01, right? Um, and then keep whatever that comes out to be, keep that full number because that's going to come out nicely that we should see how that changes. And you're going to compare these two, the force factor and the one over distance squared and see how those relate. Um, what's up next? I threw this question in. This was new to look at how does the distance change? And then look at the force factors. So the same force factors that you had before, but convert it into a fraction. because There should be a nice fraction there. Um, so we want to convert from one to the other. Um, and you may have to round a little bit to make that come out nicely, um, but it should be pretty close. And I try to make the forces such that it would come out close and you should be able to see the relationship there. Um, making a quick prediction, making a rule, kind of summarizing what's the relationship here between force and distance. I'm going to make a follow-up video once you've done those things about how to tackle uh, this last part. So good luck. How is the gravitational force related to distance? And when you double that distance, how does the force change? That's our goal. You got this. Go to it.